So, hey, everyone, uh, you know, I'll be talking and sharing kind of my story here, but just kind of want to lead with, I definitely want this to be interactive and more of kind of a fireside chat where, you know, we've had speakers talk at us all day today. So hopefully this is, you know, feel free to chime in, ask questions, kind of relate to your personal story, anything of that nature. It doesn't have to be me talking the full time. But I am a talker <laughs> and I will talk the full time if you let me. So uh, don't be shy to, to chime in, cut me off or anything like that. Uh, just a brief introduction. My name is Matthew Mullins. Uh, I am the founder of Impasta, which is a plant-based vegan cheese sauce as Eileen so kindly introduced me as. Uh, I do other work as well on the side as a procurement consultant and an ESG consultant. Uh, as well. So my passion has always been within sustainability for those ESG is kind of the terms for environmental social governance uh, you, you utilized within sustainability context. So uh, that's kind of where I guess I've started at and where I've been in the space uh, and where my passion has lied. So uh, today is here we're talking about dreaming and getting things started. Uh, I want to share kind of my entrepreneurship journey on how I went from starting as a student. I started as an undergrad student and kind of had this idea, had this dream, had this passion, and really took it and did kind of step by step on how I went to making it an actual business that's interacting in society now and ho hopefully having the positive impact that I perceive that it's having uh, and what I've done to make sure that it, it does have that positive impact. So uh, hopefully that's that's okay with you all. Can I just get a kind of a thumbs up? Like I said, I want this to be as interactive as possible. So I might ask you to do things and, you know, talk at me a little bit. Um, so I, I also want to lead with, I'm here speaking because of uh, what some may view as success, you know, uh, but my wisdom and my lessons come from my failures. So that's kind of where this kind of conversation will come from on the lessons I learned along the way. Uh, and what I hope that you impart with this, what I hope to impart with you all with this is just how do you can achieve your own dreams and different things you can pivot while you're starting your business or whatever that is, uh, and how to balance life as, as you're doing this, because that's a big thing as well. Uh, if you don't mind, just out of curiosity, feel free to kind of popcorn in, but any, any kind of dreams festering right now and you could kind of keep it high level and just say hey I want to be an entrepreneur hey I want to get into you know this specific role I want to get into coaching uh you know start a band music anything of that nature I just kind of want to hear what what's kind of in the audience at the moment I can jump in I actually had a great conversation with Jeffrey yesterday and, you know, Jeffrey and I have been talking about actually youth entrepreneurship in East Greensboro, here in Greensboro, yep. to actually develop young people and, you know, open up like we were talking about the, the arc of possibility for them and building skills. So I'm really delighted that he's here, um, but also really appreciative of your journey, Matthew, and all that you've accomplished. You're very much a role model for a lot of people here. Thanks, Linda. I'm glad to have you here as well, Jeffrey. I want to own a Christmas tree farm one day, so not exactly where to start with that, but one day, that's my dream. <laughs> Repeat that one more time. You want to start what one day? A Christmas tree farm. Oh, okay. Okay. That's neat. That's interesting. Yeah. You got that. <laughs> As an older guy, I'm just looking to help younger people start things. And Matthew, I remember the first time I met you at Silver Bay, you were sitting there, we were having this dinner at a table. I said, well, let me talk to this little kid. <laughs> and I must have been an hour later, after listening to all that you were doing, I was just stunned and blown away. And I said, now oh, there's a guy who's going to take this world someplace. So really really still remember that that yeah that discussion no no thanks bill i i remember our first conversation to meeting out by the lake it just you know, I, I was gleaming so much from you at the time as well so the conversation was just as impactful for me also yeah for me uh 
I always seem to have trouble knowing what my dreams are. I have to really shut up a little bit and things emerge, you know, so it's always, it hasn't emerged. Things that I've done before haven't emerged from a conscious process. It's more like openness and, and letting it come out and seeing sort of what wants to happen. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sort of in that space right now in my life. Yeah, that, that's that's real, Paul. Sometimes, you know, you know, you, you're not 100 percent sure what that dream looks like or what it is, but, you know, you have a desire to do, you know, something larger than yourself. But you're, you're is that's part of the process is identifying right. what that something, you know, actually. Right. Is. And it's a lifelong thing. When I was in school, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, <laughs> an astronaut and a fireman i don't know <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> i feel like sometimes people still ask themselves that question even when they are like grown up from societal standards you know you're still yeah, trying yeah, to I figure say that it out. all the time <laughs> not sure what i'm gonna do when i grow up <laughs> exactly well thank you matthew for sharing you my name is fallon um my pronouns are they them I am a nonprofit founder. Um, I have a, an expressive arts and STEM discipline education program. And so our focuses are environmental justice, social justice, and educational equity. I am vegan too. Um, so it has been a journey um, to be this radical, uh, you know, to claim who you are in this world has been my mission to show other people that they can show up authentically as themselves. So I'm glad to be in this space to share dreams, to hear others' dreams, and to continue being inspired to keep doing the work, even when we're up against all the adversity, you know? Um, and so, yeah, thank you for sharing this space. Yeah, no, Fallon, thanks for joining us. And thanks just for the work that you're doing. It sounds like you're starting with the root, which is the children. <laughs> and that, and that's, that's really impactful in, in long term. Yeah. Uh, how things kind of play out. So yeah, I would love to learn more about what you're doing. But uh, from what you just shared, definitely, I would say keep it up. Well, I talk tomorrow, so <laughs> <You can Nice. laughs> I do have to do <laughs> That's a plug, you know. So. Nice, nice. You see everyone, you got to join in tomorrow if you already didn't plan on it. Tyler's going to have some good stuff to share. Well, you know, I, I don't, you know, if unless anybody else wants to share, if anything's, you know, they want to jump in there. But uh, for the sake of time, I do want to get into kind of this, my story so hopefully I can impart some lessons and inspire uh, you all on your journey so uh, I'll kind of take it back a little bit I started in pasta in late 2019 early 2019 excuse me uh, and as you all know I'm going this far back because as you all know when you have a dream a lot of the work takes place before you actually have your first sale before you have your your first client before you actually produce that first product of what your dream may be. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about pre impasta and what that looked like because for me that was when I was really in that dreaming phase of I had this vision this grand vision and I had no idea how I was going to make it a reality. Uh, I was a college student at North Carolina A and was studying industrial engineering. Uh, I had a strong passion for sustainability and sustainability is such a broad topic, but really, I, I guess my, my thing was more so the environmental side of sustainability. I felt as though, you know, there's tons of problems in the world, but at the root cause, you can't really solve them if you don't have a sustainable system set up. Uh, you know, if, if you care about anything else, if the environment's not good, it, it all kind of comes, crumbles anyway. So that, for me, that was where that passion stemmed from. And I was talking with some friends and they were sharing with me like, hey, Matt, well, you know, you're so into sustainability, you've, you've done these internships and things of that nature, but you know, how come your diet doesn't reflect that? And I was like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> I do all this technical thing, do all these technical things. And they kind of broke it down to me like, yeah, you know, plant-based diet is really a more sustainable uh, diet from an environmental point of view, just from the resources that it takes and things of that nature. So I was like, oh, you know, that's that's a stretch. I'm not really sure about that. But I ended up doing my research. And you look at the impact that animal agriculture has on the land. 
uh, things of that nature, packaging for other food products, uh, the impact health wise that that can have. And I'm not here to kind of go into those details per se, but those are just high level things that you start kind of learning about as you go through the process. And it really started to click for me like, wow, well, you know, if I'm doing all this technical stuff, I should be doing as much as possible for myself and like embodying kind of the work that I'm, I'm really aiming to do. Uh, so there I kind of got on this kick and I start learning all about plant-based dieting and different rest, uh, recipes, things like that. I start kind of cooking for myself at home and that that's kind of the gist on how I got started down this plant-based diet kind of road. And that really is the kickoff to having a dream. I knew I, similar kind of to Paul, as he mentioned, like you knew you wanted to do something very uh, you know, bigger than yourself. You weren't really sure exactly what the dream was. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur of sorts. Wasn't sure what that looked like or what that would look like going into the future. I had some internships in the past at like solar panel companies, and it just wasn't feasible to start a solar panel business as an as a you know as a college student and trying to get things up off the ground. Um, and so yeah, I, I, I kind of landed on this kick of food. And I'm a foodie at heart. I love food. I eat all the time. Even though I have a small frame, you know, I'm going to chow down when I can. And I, I went into this, this starting phase of just really Googling how to start a business in Greensboro. That was the very beginning. Super basic, super simple. Nothing, nothing profound there. I found a startup incubator in the city scheduled about 30 minutes of an exploratory convo, ended up meeting a person that was really supportive of the dream. And I shared with them, hey, I wanna start a fast food vegan restaurant. So we, we, that was the original dream. So mind you, you know, that's kind of foreshadowing where currently I do vegan cheese sauce, but I have the start of a fast food vegan restaurant. That was the big idea at the time. Uh, so this person shared with me, I had no business acumen for real other than just kind of common sense, but they would say, hey, let's let's go and conduct some market research to, to identify what the opportunity could be in the city. So that was kind of the first step of really understanding what the what my positioning was in my local area. Uh, so I start identifying different incubators, different uh, uh, different resources in the city. I went to different grocery stores and I was asking the managers saying, hey, how, how can you show me the sales of your vegan alternative products? And that was simple enough for them to scan the barcode and they could tell me, hey, I sold 14 of these, you know, vegan chicken cutlets this week or what have you. So I kind of got a sense of what the market was doing locally and, and what kind of my positioning was and what was available to me. I spoke with restaurant managers asking, hey, what's their vegetarian sales options looking like? All, all kinds of just <laughs> random questions, talking to people and really just understanding and learning what I didn't know. Because when you start your dream, a lot of things like you don't know what you don't know when, you, when, you're, when you're starting something a lot of times. And you have to kind of be humble and, and take that time to learn and really just talk to people. Uh, and you'd be surprised what you learn as you talk with people. Uh, so I found, I took all my findings. I thought I had it all figured out. I said, man, I went and did all this market research. I talked to people. I know everything there is to know about business now and this vegan product. And there was a, like a idea launch or a community idea launch that this incubator had where you could go and pitch your idea to the community and get feedback. So I decided to sign up for that. And I went ahead and I pitched my idea and the feedback was tough. I thought I had it all together. I said, I have the data to back it, everything. And the feedback was kind of, eh. I was getting questions like, you know, what restaurant management experience do you have? Where are you gonna get the capital to start this business? You know, what specialty item are you gonna have that's gonna set you apart from other vegan businesses? None of these things I had real answers to. I had never worked, you know, I managed a restaurant. I had zero capital, but I had this dream of starting a vegan fast food restaurant. So I took that feedback and I, and I really thought and I kind of reflected and I said, hmm, well, what, what could I have that's something different? And at the time I was making this cheese, like this mac and cheese at home that people liked. And I was like, okay, cool. That's gonna be my differentiator. I'm gonna come in with a vegan mac and cheese 
nobody has that right now. <laughs> not, or, you know, not that many people have that right now. Uh, I, I got it. This, this is it. This is it. Um, and so, you know, I went back and I, I said, cool. It sounded silly pitching initially of a college student, no capital saying they're going to start a whole restaurant, you know, out of, in the middle of the city somewhere. Um, but that's kind of the leap you have to take sometimes when you're chasing your dream, you have to take, you have to start even if you don't know that you're ready. Like before you're ready, sometimes it's best to just get things going. Um, and you'd be surprised what you learn along the way that really helped shape your direction. So maybe the restaurant wasn't the most viable option. Um, so I started scaling back a little bit and taking that feedback and thought about, okay, well, when you go to a cookout, the restaurant was going to be like cookout themed. So when you go to a cookout, think about kind of what, what's, what's the most look forward to side dish. And I'm asking <laughs> if anybody wants to chime in. What's, what, when you go to a cookout of sorts, what, what are some of your favorite side dishes? Coleslaw. Coleslaw. Well, now I can't stop thinking about mac and cheese. I know. Same. Mac and cheese. <laughs> Corn Same on the cob. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Though those are all right answers, honestly. Like I like the sides at most <laughs> cookouts more than like the actual main <laughs> dish, you know. But mac and cheese in this context is the answer that came to mind for me, where I was like, man, mac and cheese, I got this. So I'm gonna start a vegan mac and cheese business. I can't do the restaurant. I'm gonna start a vegan mac and cheese business. I'm a genius. It's perfect, foolproof plan. My dream's gonna come into fruition. Nobody can stop me. Uh, and so I started looking at different resources again around the city and I saw there was a farmer's market and it was, it was kind of close to me. It was like less than a mile away. And I said, okay, my first step to achieving my dream, I have to be able to vend. I have to be able to sell something with food. You have to go through a lot more processes to sell it because you have to have it certified, things of that nature. You can't just kind of make it out your kitchen and sell it. You know, you got a health inspection. So I went to the farmer's market and said, hey, how can I get become a vendor? What, what are the next steps for me? So when you think about your dream, just kind of think of it in bite sized chunks. Like when I'm thinking back on it of what is that first step to make it real? And for me, that first step was being able to sell it uh, and being able to sell my product. So went to the current market, got actually a ton more info than I expected. They let me know that there was a entrepreneurship incubator specifically for food vendors that they offered. Uh, so I signed, I signed up for that. It's called Kitchen Connects. I went there once a week for six weeks in the evening time after class uh, and start learning more about food entrepreneurship. At the end, all the vendors got to bring their food and all the vendors in the cohort got to bring their food, try it with each other. And I thought this was it. This was my moment. I'm going to bring my mac and cheese. I'm going to have the vendors try it. They're going to tell me it's the best thing ever. And after I complete this class, I'm going to go to market next week. And, you know, the business is going to blow up. <sighs> Again, another rough day. <laughs> I, I go in there and I, had, and I was going to do baked mac and cheese. I didn't think about how long it takes to bake mac and cheese. So I'm, I'm coming in, I'm fumbling, you know, in between class trying to, it has to be in the oven for 30, 45 minutes beforehand, things of that nature. Uh, I want it hot, I get in there and I, I serve it out to everybody and everybody eats it. And I don't know if you ever been to a cookout and like somebody's like, you ever like folded the plate of food and like just kindly put it in the trash, you know, <laughs> like you don't want to hurt their feeling. Like that was kind of the look people had, you know, and it wasn't the twinkle that I really knew that I wanted from what my dream was. My dream was I want people to try this and say, wow, this is the best thing ever. Uh, and so I was a little disappointed, but again, feedback, you take it and you improve on it. Um, and so I was asking people like, oh, you know, what could be better, this and that, this and that. And of course, they were polite, telling me it was good. But I went back home, made adjustments and ended up doing like a craft mac and cheese. Now, like instead of baking it, just put the cheese sauce in there, mix it up, cut out a lot of time in my process, made it a lot more efficient. And I, again, every time I'm thinking, I got it. <laughs> this is it. Perfect dream. Going to execute on it. Go to market. And I have a crock pot full of cheese sauce and mac and cheese and I'm vending it 
people are liking it. I actually got feed, you know, people are like, wow, this is really good. You know, tons of great feedback. I was leaving the market though, and I was having these crock pot, you know, half a crock pot full of mac and cheese that I either had to eat all by myself or throw it away, which isn't very sustainable. Again, that was kind of <laughs> the basis. And so now I'm dealing with a ton of food waste because I'm dumping mac and cheese after every market. Um, and and, I, and I, I actually made the small pivot of doing two batches of mac and cheese because I said, oh, well, one's gonna be gluten-free noodles and one's gonna be regular gluten noodles, thinking I'm being more accessible. All they did was create more waste <laughs> because now there's less people eating the gluten, you know, more less people kind of diving into one pot. And so now there's more waste. So I had to go again and re-strategize on, okay, this isn't feasible. How do I make my dream a reality? So I had a conversation with a family member and they, and they I was telling them my, my kind of woes and they said, Matt, well, you're not making the actual macaroni noodles. You're making the cheese sauce. So why don't you just sell the cheese sauce? <laughs> Mind blown, right? Such a simple statement really just kind of pivoted the whole business where I was like, wow, didn't really think about it like that. So the next week I made the changes, I bought containers and I made my cheese sauce as I was making it and put it right in the containers and got some chips, some pretzels, things like that for people to sample it with, went to market and it was a hit. People were able to come, they were able to sample it. They said, hey, I want a container of cheese sauce and I could take it home and use it for whatever they wanted to, whether that was mac and cheese, loaded baked potatoes, cheese fries, put it in their soup, you know, sandwich bread, whatever they wanted to use it for. Uh, it just made it that much more accessible. So I share kind of those failures and those learning lessons to just show that as you're building on your dream, it takes time and, and you can't be scared of the failure. Like those, those times I would go to market, I'd be nervous every time. Uh, and so I'm going to pause. What kept you, Whitney asked, what kept me going when things looked so bleak? Honestly, it's the dream. <laughs> I knew I wanted to achieve this thing that I had set out to do and I was going to try my hardest and I was going to give it my all to achieve it. If I didn't give it my honest effort, I wouldn't have felt fulfilled. I wouldn't have felt satisfied and I wanted to see that gleam in people's eyes and the customer's eyes to say, this is a good product and this is something that is accessible you know, for them and it would be great. So that was kind of the driving force for me is like knowing the impact that I really in my head, the vision of the impact of a sustainable business, uh, both sustainable kind of internally for the business itself, but sustainable in the fact of how it interacts with the kind of external society. That was the driving force of, hey, I'm going to achieve this eventually. And so that kept me going. Um, so I continued kind of working in Launch Lab and cultivating my business skills. I ended up winning a pitch competition. Uh, that gave me access to more resources. They cover trademark, barcodes, things of that nature. Uh, and I went to my first grocery store to sell. And I said, I dropped off a container of sauce. I said, hey, you all try this. You're going to love it. Uh, you know, let me know how I could get this product in here. Didn't hear back. Went in a second time, dropped off another sample. Hey, you might've forgot about me, <laughs> you know, but just dropping off some more cheese sauce for you to give it a try. Uh, they said, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, someone went in there at the market. Now I, I was still vending at the market. Someone told me like, hey, why don't you have this at a grocery store? We'd love to have it outside of just coming on the weekends. And I mentioned to them like, hey, grocery store hasn't been really responsive. They said, you know, say less, I got you. And they went in and <laughs> went to the grocery store and said, hey, we need this cheese sauce. I'm a customer. I really want this cheese sauce in this store. Grocery store act literally emailed me like two days after that saying, hey, we like to carry your product. Uh, and so from there, I was able to do kind of the due diligence that the grocery store asked for, sell the product there. And it's been on the shelf ever since. And it's three years later, you know? Uh, and so that's kind of like a very streamlined, a fast <laughs> uh, example. But just as things were running smoothly, I was finally in a grocery store, I had that. Guess what happened in 2020? Just take a, a wild guess, anybody. I, I bet you don't know, you know, nobody, nobody could guess that. But yes, COVID happened. 
everything shut down, uh, farmer's market shut down, grocery stores, people weren't going to as often. I had to really pivot again and think, how do I keep my dream going? Um, and that's where I was blessed, got a grant from PayPal. Uh, I utilized that, those funds to then focus on my research and development on how do I make the product shippable uh, to people at their respective homes at the time. Uh, I used it to improve my website. I went from having like a Wix website to a Shopify website, which is more e-commerce friendly. So my user experience was now better for, for customers. Uh, I, I practiced even with the recipe and things like that. And, I, and now I had that kind of freedom to then keep going with my dream. And long story short, ended up having a shippable product that now is an e-commerce business and I'm able to deliver it to that just that much more people than I was able to on a local scale. Um, so with that, again, the dream of starting a sustainable business didn't necessarily look how I thought it was going to look in the in the short term when I first started, as I, I said, hey, I'm going to have a, a restaurant, it's going to be cookout style vegan food, nobody has this. But as I kept kind of chucking away at my dream and being consistent and really keeping it at as a focus of with the big picture that I wanted to do, you start small and just kind of keep building on that. And then eventually you look up and people see, oh, wow, you have this e-commerce vegan cheese sauce business that has been sold, you know, in almost a lot of states, you know, in a lot of states and even internationally now, but you don't get lost in the process that it takes and the failures along the way. Well, Matthew. That, that I, started that. I was, what I'm getting from you, you know, is like, I, I call it context, you know, like the way you were holding it was like, it's going to be this thing. Your context was, it's going to be something and I'm discovering it. I'm doing experiments yeah. and, and, you know, that, that's what's cool. And, and what I would call no problem attitude. It's like, that's not a problem. That's just information <laughs> and yep. I'll, I'll do the other thing. You know, so that, that's cool. I think the way you were holding it is what I'm getting from it. Yeah, no, that, that's a great perspective on how to how to kind of share that, Paul. So thank you. Uh, but yeah, it, it, was, it was definitely a no problem attitude. And, and so with that, you know, I, I do want to just say thank you all for taking the time to kind of hear me ramble <laughs> about my dream and, and story. But I really do hope that I was able to instill some some inspiration for you all as you go on and pursue your dreams and continue to grow in the things that you're doing. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thanks, everyone.